I'm at Fox Studios in Sydney, Australia, but that is only where I currently am temporarily on planet Earth because in the grand scheme of things, I'm about to visit an alien planet. Inside this corridor is actually part of the universe created by Ridley Scott for Alien Covenant, and I'm about to take a look. <laughs> I'm about to curse. Holy <laughs> So I'm standing on what you'd recognize as the Dreadnought set. And just for reference, this set wasn't stored after Prometheus, even though this set was used in Prometheus. No, they rebuilt it entirely from scratch. And all of these men and women here, these craftspeople, are working furiously to get the set ready for filming. To give you an idea of their timeline, it's currently Tuesday, today in my world, and they're filming on this set on Thursday. That means all the lighting, all the painting, all the weathering, all the props, and a huge engineer's chair will sit in the middle of that platform between now and 48 hours from now. Those are the stakes, it's pretty intense. This is uh, one of the engineer's chairs that sits at the console on the Dreadnought set. Mike, can I sit in it? Is that all right? Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. I, I was going to sit in this, but I'm not convinced it's not going to fall over. And that would be so bad. That's not how I want to be remembered for my visit here. <laughs> I'm just going to admire it then. It's beautiful. This is one of the coolest things to see in this room for me. It's the Space Jockeys platform. Uh, again, you remember it from Alien, you remember it from Prometheus. Um, everyone here is getting ready and weathering this thing. They're all adding different textures and layers to it. All the stuff that I've done in weathering my small props, it's really almost the same process. The trick is to add color, to add texture that doesn't necessarily pop to your eye, but helps bring the details out, helps to add layering and weathering, and really a story. If you just paint it one color, it just looks like a single object. But when you add that weathering, you're adding more of a narrative to that object. Here's what I love about standing here and seeing stuff like this, where you can see the beautiful, finished, ready-to-film interior and the rough-hewn foam and wood exterior. Far from pulling me out of the universe, it actually makes me fall in love with film every single time I see something like this. I mean, there are some modern materials being used, some modern foams and plastics and rubbers and stuff like that, but the basic techniques of shoring up these fake sets these techniques have been being used for hundreds of years in theater and then in film. And again, this is all in service of allowing the actors, once they enter into this universe, to enter into the universe and not have anything that takes them out of it, to immerse them so that they're present in their character and in the narrative that Ridley's creating for them and thus for us. So if you're wondering exactly how this is built, um, the interior is molded fiberglass. They had a mold that they repeated and they cast it in fiberglass and then they started assembling it and it's backed up with an AB rigid foam. Sometimes this is sprayed, sometimes this is poured. Um, the only difference between this set and let's say a set, the Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille, literally would just be some of the material choices. There was still fiberglass back then, it was more plaster than foam, but the overall structure of being slapped together out of wood is essentially the same as it was 100 years ago. So we're at a particular moment on a film set that I've experienced many times. Everyone's feverishly getting this set ready because Ridley Scott is about to take a walkthrough of the set to see uh, where it's at, changes he might want to make, lighting ideas. Again, it's Tuesday and they're filming on the set on Thursday, so the stakes are really high. Okay, now turn it around. Cut it. Good, right. 